Body Logic Physiotherapy, empowering people to achieve better health. Welcome back to episode eight of the Empowered Beyond Pain podcast, proudly brought to you by Body Logic Physiotherapy in Perth, Western Australia. This week, we welcome back the award winning Jennifer Passord from Arthritis and Osteoporosis Western Australia as a guest host. This is part two of three shorter episodes where she has a Q&A with Dr. JP Canero. Last week, we finished with JP sharing a common but unhelpful response to being told you have osteoarthritis. So that's where we'll pick up again this week. JP has a PhD in musculoskeletal pain and is a specialist physiotherapist at Bodylogic Physiotherapy. He's the lead author of a fantastic journal article which we've discussed before. It was published in the British Journal of Sports Medicine and titled Three Steps to Changing the Narrative About Knee Osteoarthritis Care, A Call to Action. He published this in collaboration with several other leading researchers, surgeons, rheumatologists and musculoskeletal pain specialists. The link for that paper and the associated infographic is on the show notes page which is www.bodylogic.physio forward slash podcast. Today, Jennifer and JP discuss the call to action for therapists treating osteoarthritis, self-management strategies for joint pain, how structure is important but only one of a handful of considerations for those with joint pain, and a quick reminder, this episode was recorded a few weeks ago, so please keep that in mind as some of the situations relating to the ongoing coronavirus pandemic have changed. If you're outdoors or being active, kudos to you. If you're not and you're driving, perhaps you can park a bit further from your destination and walk in. And if you're doing neither of those things, let us know what you are doing while listening via our social channels at EBP Podcast on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Wherever you are in the over 60 countries across the world that tune in, we hope you're safe and healthy. And remember to ask, is there more to pain than damage? So if I could, if I could give you an example, um, you know, let's say I develop pain in my knee, uh, and I'm, you know, I'm 45 or I'm 50 years old, and I have functional limitation, and I got an X-ray, and the doctor told me that my, you know, to to make things simple, he told me, look, it's just a bit of wear and tear, that's normal, mm-hmm. but your joint is degenerating, uh, and you know, you got to be careful, otherwise you end up needing a knee replacement. So basically, the the message that is instilled in that in that conversation is that it's a it's a it's a process that there's nothing not much I can do about. It's a de- degeneration that is happening, and there's nothing I can do about it. And I need to be careful. And the more I load the joint, the more I use it, the more degeneration I would cause. So immediately, you can see that a person would have a sensible response not to use the leg. Because they're thinking that if they use the leg, they're actually causing more dis- more stress on the joint, and that can be problematic. Therefore, exercise may not be the right thing to do. Mm-hmm. So you can see that how one understands their condition and the beliefs that drive that can drive their behavior. So they may, may become less socially active. They may become less physically active in order to preserve that joint. That, because otherwise, the only solution is to have a joint replacement. So that whole person approach, uh, as you can see, can can influence several levels of that uh, of that person. Now the 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 contrary is also true because those factors can be targeted, and if that person goes to understand that changes in a scan they are normal and they are normal part of aging, and things such as meniscal tear, tears, uh, cartilage degeneration, cartilage thinning. Um, uh, all these alterations that we see in a scan, they're quite common in people with no pain. Mm-hmm. And the, and the um, prevalence of those changes are greater over the age of 40, which means that as you get older, you're more likely to have those changes, but not necessarily having pain. Now, if you stop using your leg, or if you're using your leg with caution, and you are you know, tensing your muscles, so you're trying to take the weight off the leg. If you're not as physically active, if you're not engaging in the things that you love, uh, you have a leg that is deconditioned, you have biological changes uh, in your body that can make that joint more sensitive, and and therefore you, you kind of, you're going towards the becoming more unable to do things. Whereas if you understand that other factors can influence tissue sensitivity, and you learn that actually using the leg and developing strength in the leg 
and keeping your muscles relaxed and um, and engaging in activities that you enjoy and targeting you know making sure you're sleeping well that you uh, you're eating well and adopting healthy uh, lifestyle choices and that can influence your pain you know immediately you have you can take charge of this and despite the changes in your knee you can have an impact on your levels of pain and disability so that whole person approach can get you in trouble but it can get you out of trouble okay thank you so what you're saying is you're not discounting any one particular system but that all of those systems all work together to yeah. complement one another and so that yeah. we have to think of the person in a holistic manner to treat yeah. our aim. And, and if i could add just to the uh, sensation perception that you you mentioned before so as clinicians we can test sensation so we can poke in the joint and we can test if it's sensitive or not um, and the, 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 the person's perception is how they interpret that sensation. So we have patients that you know, complain of knee pain and when you go and you touch where they're hurting, it's actually not on the joint line. It's on mm -hmm. the you know, soft tissue attaching to the joint line. It's on the muscle on the surrounding, it's on the kneecap. Um, and they're really concerned about what, they, what it was found on their x-ray of their knee, but the pain is actually not on the knee, it's on the surroundings of the knee. But their interpretation is that, you know, that it's a dangerous message coming from my knee. And, mm -hmm. and a, probably a good example here is that some patients can be quite sensitive and they can say, look, it, I only have pain that, my, you know, my pain is seven out of 10 uh, and it's quite bothersome. And you can have patients that have pain that is two out of 10 and is just as bothersome. So the, the level of the sensation, it may be less than another person but the perception is that it's way worse it's like you're living by the you know on a busy road and you know i may live there and be completely distressed by the noise of all the cars and you can be my neighbor and not even realize there are cars around you so mm -hmm. that 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 interchange you know it just comes back to say that pain as any other um physical or or, or um or sensations or states, uh, it's individual, it's unique, mm -hmm. it's an, a unique experience. Okay. Thank you for clarifying that. And now you, you talked about the importance of communication um, in the answer to your last, um, um, in, in last response. Um, and I'm just interested in your paper that was published last month. Yep. You um, call for action from clinicians and there were three main themes around the actions you were calling for them to respond to. Can you just give a summary of what those three points were? Yeah, sure. Um, so probably the first thing is uh, what we've been discussing so far takes us to that first step, which is uh, changing the message. And the message is the message that we deliver to patients. So it's very common and that's the way I was trained, uh, you know, a couple of years ago <laughs> going through uni. When, um, you know, if you have pain, it means that it's, it, there is a structural change and the pain is equal to damage in your joint. Uh, and the change in the message is that pain in knee osteoarthritis is not solely related to the structure of the knee. Mm -hmm. And just making a real, really clear here at this point is that we are not discounting what happens in the knee joint. You, you're actually considering that but you're considering that not as the center of the person's pain experience, but one of several factors that may influence someone's pain experience. So the message that we're trying to promote, the clinicians to promote, is to say, hey, you've got some changes in your knee, uh, but you also have all these other factors that can influence how sensitive that knee can get. And so it's moving more towards a, an approach where it looks at all potential factors to that individual. So it's not everyone that has stress in their life, it's not everyone that has sleep problems, it's not everyone that is socially isolated, but there are some people that have those very factors. So that's kind of the step number one, which is attending to factors that can be uh, related to a person's overall health, basically. The second step, which is a consequence of that, is a change in treatment focus. and. In physiotherapy, for instance, there was uh, traditionally we will be looking at trying to, you know, change what happens in the knee joint and 
uh, and getting the muscles strong around the knee and really focusing on the knee. Whereas the treatment that we see in these days that are following guidelines and following contemporary evidence is to look at all those factors to that particular mm -hmm. individual and target factors that are modifiable to say, look, you're not using, when you use that leg, because you're afraid of putting weight on it, you're really tensing the muscles around it. So let's say my wrist is my, is my sore knee and I'm afraid of using this because my understanding is that the more I use it, the more damage I'll create in that wrist or that knee. So in order to protect it, I try not to move it. And the only way our body can do that is by tensing the muscles around it. And it's quite often that we see patients with knee pain that walk with a really stiff walk and they don't engage their leg properly. They, it's almost like they lose their shock absorption in that leg mm -hmm. and they're clenching that and they're creating a lot of stress around that knee. So that's a very clear biological component where you have sensitivity on the joint and you have muscles compressing mm -hmm. that joint. And they can engage in habits which many times are completely non-conscious that can perpetuate that sensitivity. But in addition to that, they are really concerned about their leg and they, they stop doing the, the activities that they enjoy. So let's say they used to bike ride every day mm -hmm. or every couple of days and they are no longer doing that. And they are now not sleeping very well because they are less physically active. And they are, so they don't sleep very well, that alters the chemistry in their body, that deconditions that leg. And when they put weight on the leg, they stress it. And they may be carrying a little bit more weight. Uh, mm -hmm. And we know that if you have changes in your body weight, that can influence inflammatory processes as well. So mm -hmm. for that example patient, we, we got to look at it and go, if we look at your knee, one of the things that you're doing is that your habits are not very helpful. So let's change that. Let's see if we can relax those muscles, put some weight, helpful weight on that joint and develop the muscles around it to support the joint so you feel confident in using that. And probably the first step to, do, to doing that is to understand that actually loading the joint is healthy for it. Mm -hmm. It just needs to be graduated in a way that your joint can adapt and that tends to reduce sensitivity. Now, mm -hmm. if we go beyond your knee, you're not sleeping well. One of the reasons for that is because you're not exercising enough. And cycling is a great way of getting some movement through that joint. You know, it's low impact, it builds up your muscles, and it's something that you use to do regularly. So your body and your knee is probably craving for that again. So let's get back to that. Mm -hmm. And you put on some weight. So how about we look at how much you're eating? And that gets your sleep better, which also affects your weight. So we kind of, the treatment is going more towards an, a holistic approach, looking at several factors that may impact someone's overall health, but also their knee. And a really important thing for patients with knee OA is that, as we mentioned before, several of these patients will have many comorbidities. So they may have cardiovascular disease, they may have respiratory disease, they may have diabetes. And keeping themselves active with a healthy weight is so important. Um, so we go in and see the physio, for instance, it's, um, it's more than just getting exercise for the knee. It's about developing an active, um, healthy lifestyle that enables them to be healthier and feeling better about their knee. And the third step is again a consequence of this, is empowering the patient to have a, a, um, a sensible understanding of their condition. So before we use the example of someone that is afraid of using their leg because they think that putting weight on the knee is gonna cause more damage. And now after the, the, uh, the experience they had with the, with the clinician, they may understand that actually putting some weight on that joint is actually really healthy and really important. Uh, and they can use that, they develop strategies to use that leg better. They have an understanding that other factors can influence their pain. They have an understanding that acting, uh, having a healthy lifestyle is important for them. So my job as a physio is to help the person make sense of why their knee sore and what are the things they can do to alleviate that. But also how can we bridge the gap between where they are and where they want to be. So what are their goals? You know, are their goals to be able to play with their grandkids, to lift their grandkids, to ride their bike, to walk every day with their wife, uh, whatever it is. And can we bridge that gap and create a plan? But that plan is an active plan and a plan that the patient is in charge. 
So the third step is coaching patients to put them in charge of this condition, which if we go back to your early question around, you know, patients have been, you know, they're isolated because of COVID-19. Um, having an active self-management plan is a, it's imperative in, in times like this. So the end of another episode. We hope you found it empowering and have some clear ideas to work on. My key take-homes were, despite having pain in the knee, we now understand it's not just the knee that contributes to the pain. That osteoarthritis is a whole person condition. Even with advanced osteoarthritic changes, you can still improve pain and function without surgery. Load and impact, which is a form of load, is actually helpful for our joints if it started appropriately and progressed gradually with adequate recovery. And finally, treatment for osteoarthritis is a great opportunity to reflect on your overall lifestyle and a chance to perhaps change a few things that help your overall health. Next week is part three of having Jennifer from Arthritis and Osteoporosis Western Australia as a guest host, and I share a favourite study of mine relating to guessing the slope of a hill when you're alone compared to when you're with a close friend. As always, show notes including relevant infographics and references can be found at www.bodylogic.physio forward slash podcast, and we can be contacted via Twitter. Until next time, remember to ask, is there more to pain than damage? Please note, what you heard on this episode of Empowered Beyond Pain is strictly for information purposes only and does not substitute individualised care from a trusted and licensed health professional. If you would like individualised, high-value care for your pain, sports or pelvic health problem, head to the Bodylogic website and make an appointment. Theme music generously provided by Fervin and Cash.